the first thing we want to do is measure for the overall real estate and I've already measured for the plant that I'm working with and uh, I have nine inches from where the plant comes out of the dirt and I'm just measuring for one plant and in this case it is edge to leaf edge it's four inches so I will draw a vertical line and now I have my real estate. So this is the space into which my plant will go. I will put my sketch on a separate sheet of tracing paper, saving the real estate so that I can work within it. Now I'm going to measure just for the height of the leaves which looks like about five and a half inches so I know that my leaves are going to come from there and I'm going to measure from the top down to where the last florets come in and they come in around six inches. So the flowers start down here but the leaves grow up this high. Now I'm going to also, because this flower that I have in front of me has a little slight angle on it, I'm going to get the tip of the flower spike, measure in from one edge, and it's about one and three quarter inches. And I know that's where my spike is going to start. And if I go down to the bottom, I know the center of my spike is at about two and a half inches. So that means I am going to, and I'm going to do this with a little darker pencil so you can see better, rather than using my 4-H, which is what I commonly do. And I'm going to draw the gesture of that flower but just lean slightly. And now I know that I have at least a, an inch for the width of the stem where the leaves join to the spike. And I'm going to draw the first one in, which goes all the way to the edge, a spot where the leaves wrap around the spike. And now I have my leaves in. Now the spike down at this end of the flower is quite thick. And so sketch that in because you might see some of it through the, through the flowers themselves, through the florets. And it tapers and it gets quite thin up at the top. And in fact, it's a little lower than the uh, actual height itself because I have a flower that goes in here. So looking at my plant, I know that the first flower that's going to go in here is going to be a profile and almost a rear view. So this is where my first flower is going to go and I'm basically going to draw them in as uh, cones because then you can put the flower in uh, pretty easily after that. And then the next one here faces, really faces backwards. And he's going to go in here. And the next one that I have is down here somewhere. And we can actually measure this to be sure. So it's about an inch from this top portion here. So this is part of this first flower. And then this one faces the other profile this direction. And 
then we have one that's almost very close to it that is almost three-quarter view and if you look at the face of the cylinder you can kind of see what it's going to do so we have one back here we have one here now we have at this point we have a big frontal view right here now let's measure that to be sure of that yeah, it wants to be an inch and a half that's huge so we know that's going to take that space there and then we have one down here that's about three quarter and that's going to be about one and a quarter and it actually is quite wide so some of the petals cover the um, the spike itself and then there are others way in the back here that are profile view um, that are very very uh, narrow and you can kind of fill in from there uh, this is a three-quarter over here and in some cases these are going to this might have to be moved over a little bit make it more accurate and you can just fill in flowers from that vantage point so once you have flowers in there where they're positioned you can start to put in the petals the way you see them and this way it'll make the process much easier than if you were trying to do this just by um, drawing each individual piece without planning ahead and knowing where things have to go. Just by having that underlying form, it really helps you to keep track of everything very nicely and that's the process so this way things can overlap or you need them to overlap but the structure underlying structure is is accurate so that's going to be bigger This will make this a lot easier to do. You can see here at the top, you really see that spike. Then you can check your size relationships and see what things that need to be bigger or a little smaller. Because then it will all fit into place nicely. Remember that each one of these florets has six petals. There's another profile back here. But I'm going to wait and I'll put that in after I've got these pretty much, pretty much established as to where they have to go. Once the rough sketch is finished, a second overlay adding more detail is the next step. And finally, a single line drawing that will be used for your transfer.